What's up everybody, it's Roman Gaming here. So I really quickly wanted to say that uh, I pretty much apologize because this week I really haven't been uploading too much apart from the Call of Duty videos that I made about the announcement of course of World War II. That was about it. I basically have been like very unexpectedly busy this entire week so I just wasn't able to really focus on videos. My bad for that. From now on I'm really gonna start uh, uploading a lot more frequently again. So... I saw this pretty much topic being talked about now for quite a few days already because it's been a couple days uh, when this interview, you know, actually uh, took place. It was an interview with Phil Spencer, of course, the boss at, at, at Xbox right now, leading, uh, uh, you know, all their projects, the Xbox Scorpio, of course, they're talking about a lot right now. Um, and at the same time, you know, he was, yeah, pretty much being in interviewed about his vision about where the gaming industry is going right now, talking a bit about his thoughts on the big story-driven games, which, of course, is kind of controversial because a lot of people are complaining that's kind of what Microsoft is lacking right now with the Xbox platform and I fully agree with that myself so uh, he said something that a lot of people kind of fell over I guess and to me that's really you know multiple ways to kind of look at it so I wanted to talk about it so let me really quickly like read out a bit of the the, the entire quote that he was talking about um, yeah, and then discuss it afterwards, I guess. So what he says is that uh, the audience for those big story-driven games, I won't say it isn't as large, but they're not as consistent. You'll have things like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild or Horizon Zero Dawn that will come out, and they'll do really well, but they don't have the same impact that they used to have because the big service-based games are capturing such a large amount of the audience. Sony's first-party studios do a lot of these games, uh, and they're very good at them, but outside of that, it's difficult. They've become more rare. It's a difficult business business decision for uh, those teams because you're fighting into more headwinds. Now, like I said, a lot of people somewhat fell over this because it felt maybe to them a bit like he was trying to, you know, fire shots at Microsoft, or sorry, at uh, Sony and Nintendo, of course, uh, uh, really promoting his own brand again and kind of like uh, defending why Microsoft right now is not really focused on those story-driven games anymore, at least as far as, yeah, what they're really coming out with, out with at the moment, right? So, um, I, I, can, I can understand that. Now, at the same time, I will say this, though. I don't think he's wrong at all with what he's saying right now. I think he's totally right that big story-driven games do not have the same impact anymore as they used to have. So, you know, really the way I look at it, right, is that... Um, Think about what the games are that are currently popular at the moment. Just look at like what's being played on Twitch, what people are talking about nowadays, what a lot of money is being spent on. He is completely right. It's the service-based multiplayer games nowadays. Um, you know, yeah, like I said, look at Twitch. You know, a lot of the big PC games are popular there, right? I'm talking about League of Legends, Hearthstone, Counter-Strike. These multiplayer games with lots of microtransactions and, and things being added to them that are alive for a long time already, have been played for years. And then you look at kind of like on the console side I guess obviously Call of Duty and Battlefield are the big shooters you have GTA which uh, look at GTA Online like the whole reason why we haven't gotten any GTA single player DLC is because GTA Online pretty much did everything for Rockstar they didn't even need that single player content anymore um you can look at, like, the following game I'm going to mention, to me, pretty much, the way I look at it objectively, that's, like, somewhat of the prime example of what's the popular game nowadays, and what is kind of, I guess, the game of the generation so far, you know, objectively speaking, as far as engagement, and that is Destiny. Like, the reason why is because... People bought Destiny at launch for $60, you know, uh, yeah, of course, uh, the game sold a lot initially, which is what most games make their money out of, simply sales, but then you've got this whole trajectory following the launch where, uh, uh, you know, uh, Activision is selling a bunch of DLCs, like different expansions, you know, of course, you had like the mini DLCs that came out at first for like 15 bucks, then the expansions every year for 30 bucks, alongside of that, they're doing the microtransactions where you're buying emotes and you're doing, like... People are spending so much time and money on that game that that's really like where gaming is going nowadays. Now, I myself am not in the slightest a fan of that. And, you know, I've been very clear about that. I love the single player focused game. But at the same time, I see a big problem, not only with, you know, the games that, that companies and developers are deciding to make, but also the type of games that gamers nowadays want to play. They want to play these games. They, they don't really look at quality anymore for their games. They rather look at quality quantity. Oh, I'm spending $60 on this game, I better get a good 50 or 100 hours out of it. Which is why, even if you look at like certain single player games now nowadays, what is the most popular genre? It's the open world game, it's the RPG, the games where even if it's single player, you're still gonna get those 50 to 100 hours out of it. Um, and this is exactly why people look so negative at games like The Order. And, you know, granted, I, I can kind of understand that because The Order was too short, don't get me wrong, but it's also why, you know, if you look at the more, the 
yeah, the, simply the linear single player type of games that would be the 10, 15, 20 hours maybe long, uh, they're not as respected anymore and they're not as... Um, popular anymore simply you know once again he's mentioning games like breath of the wild and horizon zero dawn here and uh, i actually don't think those are really the great examples because those games still at least give a lot of people you know some type of value to it but then at the same time right like once again if you, you know, these are games that are made by, by, or th that are exclusive, right? Nintendo makes uh, Breath of the Wild. It's a big kind of like system seller for the Switch or the Wii U, even you could look at. Horizon Zero Dawn is made by Sony. It's a big system seller for the PS4. But then you look at the third party companies, you know, the people that aren't reliant on a certain, a certain platform that they need to develop for. No, they make games for all platforms. What games are being made nowadays a lot? It's simply the multiplayer uh, uh, based games, co op based games, games that really are these services where people play the multiplayer, where they invest even more money into it afterwards with DLC, with season passes, with microtransactions, with everything like that. And so, you know, once again, like to some people, it might have seemed like Phil Spencer was kind of trying to fire shots at, uh, uh, at, at you know, Sony and Nintendo for making these type of games. But he's kind of right. This is simply where we're going right now. And a big part of that is simply to blame on the gamer because this is what they want. Personally, I would rather get a good quality experience experience than just a quantity experience and I'm not saying that some of these big games of course can be quality because they sure can be me myself I've really been enjoying Destiny nonetheless but I do think quality wise it's not like the best game out there in the slightest you know um so yeah, it's, it's the same as how I would look at a movie. Like, I would rather watch one amazing movie than see five mediocre ones. It's kind of the same thing going on here right now with games, I guess. But this is simply where we're headed. I don't think really he was saying something that uh, uh, stupid. At the same time, I do want to point out, I hope he's not just using this as defense for Microsoft themselves not making any more story-driven games, because I do think they're kind of important to sell your console. And of course, for Project Scorpio to sell really well, I think they need to have more than just the, uh, yeah, multiplayer service based games because especially those ones are usually third party once again destiny gta uh, uh online i guess right uh, yeah all these games are usually coming out on multiple platforms so that everybody can really play them regardless of what they game on and you see on microsoft side they have halo and gears but they're not as big anymore so they do need a lot more of those single player story driven games for sure um so these are kind of my thoughts, I guess. Anyway, I would like uh, you, of course, to share me, share with me your thoughts pretty much in the comments. So let me know how you feel about this. How do you look at, you know, where we're going with the gaming industry right now and what's really popular right now? And do you think you agree with him on that? Yeah, single player games simply don't have the same impact anymore as they used to. And then with that being said, look forward to a lot more videos being uploaded. Thanks a lot for watching, of course. Leave a quick like, like to help support my channel. Uh, and then for now, I hope to see you again next time.